Hello, my arcade friends. This is Arid. In-game name, September on the Thunderwing Nui and the public test server. Today I'm coming to you from the test server, and I'm here to talk about the Hiram gear. What I'm going to try to do is lay it all out for you, and hopefully we get some good discussions going on in the comment section down below. All right, so there's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. The Hiram gear is the new gear added in version 4.5, to the North America and the EU regions in May 2018. What I want to do in this video is to tell you everything that I know about it as seen from the test server which was just updated today, May 15th. All right, so what I'm going to do here is pull up a PowerPoint document and that's just for me to, you know, just keep me focused and stay on track and I'm going to cover all the basic info that we know uh, thus far. So the first thing about this gear is it is going to be on the Fresh Start and the Legacy servers. So you must be level 50 to equip it. So, the, so those of you that are on the Fresh Start, that means max level. Uh, the gear is also bound when you find it and when you open it. So you can't trade it, you can't sell it. As of right now, there are only four zones that spawn the mobs that actually drop this gear. Um, those are actually pretty easy to spot because those are tagged with the, uh, like a, it almost looks like a guild tag on a mob and it says Abyssal Legion right in their nameplate. So it's pretty easy to spot. So I'm just going to pop into game. I'm standing next to a spawn of them here and, uh, you can take a look at that. So there's this. All right. So there are four zones, which these mobs do spawn in. That is Markala, Calmlands, Heedmar, and New Amari. And I'm actually going to show you those locations here in the video or in this uh, spreadsheet here. So first up is Heedmar. Uh, as you can see, there are small clusters consisting of each one of these little dots represents a spawn point. And it's about 12-ish mobs, depending on which point you're at. Uh, so next up is Markala. Now these actually have larger spawn areas that have a little bit more mobs. Um, but they're actually pretty spread out from zone to zone here. Uh, okay, so next up is New Amari. Uh, again, this map has those small clusters, and it's really spread out uh, all over the map. Some of them are pretty close to each other, which will make that kind of area a little bit more contested, I would suspect, but we'll see. And uh, finally, we have Calmlands, which actually has just two spots, but both of those I visited today and uh, they have a generous smattering, uh, if you will, of mobs in each one. So those are going to be pretty good points. It is also important for me to point out that all, the zone, all these zones do not cycle war, which basically means that you're not going to get that 50% loot drop buff that you normally see uh, when zones cycle to war. Um, so what happened is I personally spent about 40 minutes uh, hunting for this video, and in that time, I got 13 pieces. I had a 60% loot buff, you know, loot drop buff from various potions and my crater cub, which if you're on the fresh start, you don't even have access to that. Um, I actually do not think that level of buff, 60%, will be possible on fresh start. I haven't sat down and looked for every buff possible on the fresh start but I'm thinking it's around 40 or maybe 50 percent with Halcyona so 60 percent is probably not even doable on the fresh start uh, however for those on legacy you can actually buff pretty high if you have the old quest buffs I have a video which I listed all the uh, known loot drop buffs you can check out here on YouTube so when this gear drops in normal arc age fashion what you get is a unidentified uh, piece and that each one of those pieces is going to cost you 60 labor to open now if you actually have a high larceny proficiency you can mitigate some of that uh, labor cost so what I've seen that drops are the one-handers two-handers leather plate and cloth and I'm thinking there might be an instrument but those might also be lumped in with one-handers uh, because I pulled a bow out of either the two hand or one hand. So I'm not sure how those are lumped together, but uh, there may be a separate instrument drop. I don't know. We'll have to confirm that. So when you open them, it is RNG uh, what you get. 
you cannot pick your weapon or armor or armor type. So if you get like a, a, a plate drop, when you open it, you might get a headpiece, you might get boots, you don't know. It's all RNG. And uh, every piece will come out as grand grade, and you'll get three different stats from two different pools, which I'm going to explain next. Okay, so there's two different stat pools. Now, the first stat pool, this actually applies to every armor and weapon type, though the amount that you get uh, of this stat will uh, depend on the slot that it goes in. So, like, the head or the two-hand weapon uh, might have lower or higher stats like a two-hander obviously is going to have more than like a waist or sleeves uh, that said pool number one is all attributes that's your strength stamina intelligence spirit agility now the second pool this is where you actually get the good stuff like crit damage toughness resilience and so on you'll get two stats from the second pool which again all of this is random and each slot has its own pool uh, for slot or pool number two so for example in the armor category no matter which type whether you get plate leather or cloth those will all have the same uh, stat pool number two for the following items the helmet the chest the legs the hands and the feet uh, so here in this spreadsheet or this uh, PowerPoint you can see that you can get two of the following stats. This is what's in that pool. Uh, you get maximum health, resilience, melee, ranged, or magic damage reduction, uh, shield penetration, and shield penetration rate. Now, in the, the other armors, which would be the wrist and the waist, there's actually a different stat pool number two, if you will, which include toughness, focus, and all the backstab damages and received healing. Uh, so we're going to move on to weapons. Uh, those are actually grouped into two different groups as well. So the one hand, the two hand, and the bow, you can pick up melee, magic, ranged, and healing, critical chance, and critical bonuses. Now those are all different stats. I actually put them in one line in this document just because listing each one of those separately was going to take a lot of space up but each one of those have separate chances so melee it's not melee magic ranged it's melee or magic or ranged crit chance or melee magic or ranged crit bonus so those are all separate uh, and there's also healing crit chance and crit bonus uh, also in that category you're going to find cast time attack speed uh, defense or magic defense penetration now the shields and the instruments get their own little pool which include melee magic ranged healing attack or healing bonus then they also can get parry shield block evasion or move speed now I know I went through all that pretty quickly but I will make this PowerPoint available to you here in uh, Google Docs There will be a link in the uh, video description so if you want to look into that just click that link I'd also like to thank uh, Mark at Omnom.io for putting this info out he actually just put it out I think it was yesterday or the day before but I was able to confirm those stats today uh, here on the test server so I will also put a link to Mark's article uh, in the video description if you haven't seen it yet. I know he was doing some website updates, so some of those links may not work uh, if you're here right away when this video is posted. But uh, for those coming in a little bit later, those links should be good for you. Okay, so as I said before, the gear always starts out at grand grade. And so the way you level it up or get it to a higher grade is not like regrading like normal gear. Uh, actually, it works like the cloaks, the costumes, or Aranor weapons, if you're familiar with those systems. However, in this case, instead of feeding in like synthesis shards or synthium shards, yeah, I say that a lot, uh, or crafted weapons for like Aranor, you actually feed the harem gear more harem gear. So also unlike Aranor, you can feed any type of harem gear to any other type of harem gear. So you can feed a two-handed weapon, some plate armor, or bows if you want. 
I'll show that here in game with the items that I have. So what I have here is a set of cloth sleeves. And as you can see here, I can stick in a two-handed weapon, a one-handed weapon, or this bow, whatever I want. I can put it all in there, and uh, it'll, it'll suck it all up. It also looks like it doesn't matter what item you stick in there, whether it's a two-handed weapon or another armor piece. It is actually worth 100 experience points at the grand level uh, towards the leveling up whatever you're feeding it into. You can also see, based off of the yellow bar, uh, if you look at this yellow bar in here, that actually shows the potential bonus for proc XP. And based off of this, which I'm putting two pieces in, which is 200 XP, but that bar is only going up at the most, it looks like 50%. Uh, so unlike Aranor, which I've seen proc 99%, uh, this looks like it's capped at about 50%. So two pieces, no matter how lucky you get, will never take your item up to the next stage, which is rare. So I'm not sure if that's a fixed amount uh, that you get when it does trigger. Um, and we're, I've got some, uh, I've got these pieces in here, and we're going to combine them here in, in this video in a second. Um, but I actually asked Tryon to supply me some gear so I can test this stuff for you guys here on the test server. But right now, the uh, whatever the XL has done has actually broken the way that the GMs grant items, and so they were unable to fulfill that request. But like I said, I will combine what I have later here in this video. Okay, so let's move on to the drops. As I said earlier, I spent about 40 minutes uh, out here looking for these uh, 13 pieces that I got, which is... Uh, which is about half as many of the Prince crates. So I actually got 27 Prince crates and 13 pieces, 27 divided by two, you know, that's, that's basically 13, it's 13 and a half. So it's, it's in that ballpark. So the way I like to think of it is with a 60% loot buff, uh, you're gonna get um, about half as many harem pieces as you do uh, Prince's crates. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Because although my character on the test server is super OP, uh, and like nobody on live will have this kind of gear score, they might have a high one, but not this kind of high. Um, but if we use the Prince crates as a standard, you all know, uh, based off of your gear, your character, your build, whatever, how many Prince crates you can get in a given amount of time. Uh, and if you factor in a 60% loot buff, that should give you a ballpark. Uh, of about you know half as many of those crates uh, is about how much hear harem gear that you're going to get. Well said. Okay, so let's move on to quality. Is this gear any good? That's a good question. Well, this gear is actually equal to Delphinod in this gear score and uh, the damage or the DPS. So in fact, if you look here on the test server, you'll actually see that this stuff is already in the item encyclopedia. And it is in the same gear score row as Delphinod. So this actually makes this gear very, uh, very attractive for those that are on the fresh start. Also, it's actually pretty attractive for, for those of you who are on Legacy. Most notably for those who, wa who want to add like a um, some of those some of those stats from that second pool to their offhand weapon, bow, or instrument. Uh, that that's pretty good. I mean, I may even give up my shield on Legacy uh, to take some of those bonuses. As far as the grade goes, again, it drops at grand, and you can level it up by feeding in Aranor or Harem gear to it, uh, which will max out at Celestial. Uh, but we already know that in Korea, they have a second tier of Harem gear, and they also allow the harem gear to go up to divine. So it does look like XL has some plans to make this gear a thing, which basically means that we're gonna be competing with everybody and their brother for these few spawn locations. Uh, it's gonna get pretty bloody out there. You can mark my words. Uh, it will also be prudent to point out here that unlike Delphinod or any other crafted gear, this stuff, this gear, this harem gear, harem gear will not accept any temper 
And just to prove that, I do have some tempers uh, here in my bag. Uh, I've got a, a super, a prime, and even a resplendent temper here on September. And as you can see, no matter which one I use, the harem gear is all grayed out. Okay, so the last thing that I want to mention about the harem gear before I do some combined testing here is that there is no way to reroll your stats. By that I mean that there is currently no cash shop, no quest, no loyalty item that will allow you uh, the chance to get a different stat. However, you do have the opportunity to pick new stats as, the, as each item moves up in grade just like the cloaks, the costumes, and Eranor uh, items do. And so we're going to take a look at that here in a moment uh, when I just combine the stuff that I got. All right, guys, that was the portion that I scripted. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell with me, uh, but uh, that was my scripted portion, and I want to just record this live as I do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some combining, but before I do that, I want to also tell you that there is a, an achievement that I completed uh, that gave me a, uh, a 10,000 or honor point potion. Uh, so when I got my first uh, Hiram piece, I uh, received what they call the Hiram Legacy Crate. And when I opened that, I got a quest. Uh, and I also got 10,000 honor point potion. So I just wanted to show that here. And uh, let's move on. Also, uh, before I before I start combining, I also want to add one other thing. Uh, I said there was only four war, war zone or four zones in which you can get it. Uh, there's actually five. You can actually get. I was just in Diamond Shores for this video. Um, Diamond Shores is quite literally full of these mobs. That is actually a good thing because. Those mobs uh, are Diamond Shores, Wool Cycle, and War Zone, which gives you that 50% buff. And Diamond Shores is relatively big. So I explored this whole map, the whole area where the Time Lock creatures were. Uh, there's still the Time Lock creatures, just like all the other zones. The normal mobs are still there, but now there's just more, which is great. Uh, also, around the, uh, the uh, Hoochie Bangs, uh, the, uh, the Ost Manit things... Uh, the fortresses, yeah, that's the word. Uh, in this whole area here, they're all up in there, man. All up in there. They're also up here at the top in this area. And then, of course, they're over here by the Al Clara Rift. So just Diamond Shores is basically full, full of these mobs, and that's actually a good thing. Um, okay, so let's do some combining um, I'm just going to do these sleeves. These sleeves actually suck for stats. I got received healing, melee damage increase, and agility. Um, so let's go ahead and regrade it. So I'm going to put in two of these pieces. I'm just going to stick in whatever, whatever I got here. This is the test server, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, also, I wanted to point out, and I didn't, don't think I pointed it out in the PowerPoint, but notice that as you combine this stuff, you are using gold and you are using labor. So it's 20 labor and uh, two and a half gold basically at the grand level. And I'm going to suspect that uh, when we get to uh, rare, it's going to actually cost more gold. But we'll find out. All right, so there's the first one. Let's see if I get bonus XP. Uh, no bonus XP. That's not surprising. Uh, so we're going to put in two more. And uh, so we're guaranteed to get, I think, to here. And then we may get up to here. I don't know. Okay, so it is 248 still. Let's stick those in there. That was a bow and a two-hander. All right, so it went up to rare. And it didn't give me the ability to pick new stats. Interesting. Or maybe I didn't see it. All right. Oh, the gold cost is the same, and the labor cost is the same, so that's good. Uh, my sleeves are rare now. We'll stick in two more. Ah, okay, yeah. So here's the here's the pick a new stat. Uh, let's try to get uh, intelligence or something. I don't I don't know. Definitely don't need agility. Definitely don't need melee damage. But uh, let's re-roll that. 
And so although I did select agility, it did not change. It did not change. You guys see that? That happened live. Don't know what's going on. Oh, it didn't go up. No, nah, duh. All right, so let's open up a couple more. Okay, so again, I'm going to select agility and uh, put two items in here. And we got, we've got it denoted down here at the bottom, agility replace. All right. Uh, there we go. I got stamina, which, you know, that's better than uh, agility. But my advice is when you got a, a crap item like this, uh, you wouldn't even bother uh, feeding it anything. And uh, let's open up these last two. I was hoping to get a proc, but I didn't get a proc. Uh, so the the required XP at Arcane is 918. I'm going to have to go back and look at my video to see what it was at rare. So you need 918, which is basically uh, uh, nine pieces worth. And let's see if I get a proc. Hey, I did. 30% uh, XP, which gave me a bonus of 72 XP. Uh, again, I think this is going to be capped to 50%. So if it does proc, uh, like the most you'll get is like 100 XP. Now there is new new feeding items coming uh, in phase two of this gear. Not phase two of uh, Fresh Start, but phase two of this gear. Uh, if you look at Omnom's article, there is mobs that drop um, some feeding XP feeding items. So um, it's different than the gear. Uh, you can get like uh, Arcane and Rare. Uh, drop so it actually gives you more XP. So there you go. That is the harem gear to the best of my ability to explain it. Um, and I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Omnom for his excellent work. Thank you, Mark, for everything that you put out for us. It's always, always appreciated. And you know I love you, man. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I want to hear what you guys think about this system in the comment section down below. So please engage. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you all have found this both helpful and informative. That is the goal. Special thanks to Al Hassan Mohammed on YouTube and Vibe Skies on Facebook for both this intro and outro music. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Discord. Links will be in the video description. If you'd like to support my work, you can do so by becoming a Patreon, a subscriber on Twitch, or direct donations are accepted through Streamlabs. I'd like to thank my current Patreon, Umokan Onal, for the continued support. You rock. Also, big shout out to my Twitch subs who make every Friday the bright spot of my week. And finally, I'd like to thank the wonderful supporters who have donated to me over the years, Riot Devil, Mac, Asendra, Elder, and Wicked Bait. Until next time, this is September Sane. Be well.